Want to put a TV outside? Don't do it before you watch this video. I did the research for you. Let's go. Okay, I started out with getting a standard TV and had the idea to put a cover over it. When I hung it up, the quality was terrible. Outdoor TVs are quite a bit different. A big difference is their NIT rating. This is their brightness rating. You need a higher NIT depending on how bright it is where the TV will be. Most manufacturers sell the sets based on full shade, partial sun, and full sunlight. This basically translates to the brighter outside, the higher the NIT rating, but the more the NITs, the pricing starts jumping pretty high. Also, outdoor TVs are rated to work in more extreme environments and they're safer for outdoor use, meaning they're weatherproof with metal housing and resistant to UV rays, dust, and bugs, and they work in wider temperature ranges. The TV I went with has an operating temperature from minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Being in California, the higher temperatures is a concern. We're presently in a heat wave and it's been in the hundreds. I was able to narrow my choice based on the highest knit and price down to two TVs, Furion and Sunbright. If you've never heard of these brands, don't feel bad. I heard of Sunbright, which is a popular outdoor TV brand, but I went with Furion because for the same size, 43 inches, it was less expensive, $1,300 versus $1,600, and the knit rating on the Furion was $700 versus Sunbright's $500. My set was for partial sun. I figured this would be good enough since the area gets shaded later on in the day and direct sun TVs the cost jumps quite a bit. Now, I can't tell you which TV is best. Do your research. I'm just saying what I decided to go with. My TV came in in about a week. Let's walk you through the details of the 43 inch Furion Aurora Partial Sun and check out the video quality at different times of the day. Before we do this, I'm doing these videos to help you, so don't forget to help me and subscribe, and if this is helpful, give me a thumbs up. As I mentioned, it took about a week for this TV to come in. No one has these in stock that I can find in my area. A couple things to mention, this is a 4K TV, but these sets are normally not smart TVs, so no Wi-Fi, no apps like Netflix or Amazon. I'll be adding a Fire Stick. The remote and TV are weatherproof, which is nice, but they're not waterproof. I have to be careful no kids throw the remote in the pool. The TV has auto brightness, so as the time of day changes, the TV should adjust automatically. Enough of the box, let's open up this bad boy. Another thing to be aware of is that these outdoor TVs are much heavier. This 43 inch weighs 47 pounds. A standard 43-inch indoor Samsung or LG weighs between 16 and 18 pounds. That's almost three times heavier. This is good to know to make sure that your TV mount can handle the weight. I got lucky. Mine does. Here it is. I'm not sure if this feels like metal or plastic, but I'll take their word for it, it's metal. I did check out the Sunbright and it seemed to be made of the same material. For sure, not like a regular indoor TV.
Let's take a look at the back. These brackets look like another way to mount the TV, but the set also has the typical mounting screw options. Typical external controls of power, volume, channel, with rubber for weatherproofing. Take a look at the door. Power cable with all the inputs, three HDMI and one USB. That will power my fire stick. It has RF inputs, audio for external speakers, VGA for a computer, which I'm not sure why they offer these anymore, just go HDMI. And also offered our component inputs, which I won't be using. There's this pad on the bottom that keeps things tight when you run the cables outside of the unit. The same type of installation is around the door. This is the mount I'm going to use. It's for indoors, but it seems to be powder coated, so I'm hoping it will survive the elements. Looks like the holes will line up, but the legs are blocking the door for opening and closing. I'm going to have to chop these off. Not to forget, these sets I believe normally come with speakers. You can see these are on the bottom of this set to avoid weather, but from reviews, they don't sound very good. We'll see how they are. I might have to purchase an outside weatherproof sound bar. Let's take a look at what else is in the package. Directions, a weatherproof remote, it's very thin and lightweight, and some audio and video cables. Let's check out the remote. It comes with one of these round batteries, which I wish it had the standard double or triple A, but I guess they couldn't get the remote this thin profiled. One thing I noticed is that there is some moisture on the remote. Also, the battery was kind of tough to put in. It doesn't seem to fit nicely. I didn't want to force anything, so I averted to the manual, which doesn't tell you anything. Anyhow, I got it in, but it turned out the remote was bad. I called support and they were good at getting me a replacement. Definitely a bit of a pain, but once I got the new remote, it worked. Back to the TV mount. I'm going to slice through the TV mount legs so I can open the door. An angle grinder was the right tool. After I cut off the legs, I used some screws with spacers because the other mount was in the way. This will work out nicely. I think all the other outdoor TVs have the same mounting setup, so good to be prepared. Here it is all mounted and ready to be hung. This is the area. It's about 2 p.m. You can see it is shaded. I figure partial sun would be perfect and save me from going with a full sun rated set. By the way, the full sun sets usually have a thousand nits on up. This is the mount on this neck that swivels. As I mentioned, the TV is 47 pounds, but this will handle up to 60 pounds and a 55 inch regular indoor set, so I'm good. Obviously, I made sure I anchored this into a wood support beam.
So turning this on, this is the TV quality around 2 p.m. A good amount of reflection and very hard to see the picture, I hate to say. Right now it's 4 o'clock p.m. and the picture is coming through more as it gets darker. Here it is at 6.30. At this time the picture starts to become acceptable. Anytime later than this, the picture starts to get amazingly clear. You can see the sun setting and there is no sun in the backyard. I'm hoping this gives you a good quality perspective based on the sunlight you're dealing with. I might have to try and put something around the TV as a sunshade, but I'm not crazy about that. I'm not expecting any better from other outdoor TV sets in the price range because this one has one of the highest nit ratings for partial sun TVs. At the time of this review, Furion didn't have a direct sun TV, but Sunbright does, which the smallest is 49 inches with a thousand nits for $5,000. That's their cheapest direct sun TV. The other major brand models are about the same price point. Was it worth it? Well, it's better than a standard TV because the weatherproofing and the nit rating. A standard TV wouldn't be viewable till much later. I hope this review helped you. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next videos.